What's going on everybody? This is another DLJ Works tutorial and in this video I am going to show you how to use jQuery to insert any HTML CSS element into any WordPress theme. On this website, this is a church website I've done for a client, pretty much the pastor of a church. As you can see here, the red that is here is an inserted element in between this slider that is only on one slide and another element on the front page of the WordPress theme. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you the first step that you actually need to do. We actually need to download a plugin, which I already have downloaded. And that plugin is actually called jQuery UI Widgets. I will show you how to get that plugin just so you know where to go. Let's go ahead and let's go to plugins or let's go to add new and I'm going to show you what it looks like. jQuery UI widgets. All right. As you can see, this is what it looks like. jQuery UI widgets and it's by David Guire. And right now it is active and it's compatible with this present theme that I'm using. So now what we're going to do from here is now we have that. Let's go ahead and let's go to once you have that downloaded, it's going to be under settings, jQuery UI widgets. All right. Now I already have some code that's embedded here. When you first do your jQuery UI widgets by default, you need to have the jQuery parentheses document dot ready function already typed in and it's best practice to go ahead and open this parentheses up and then close it down here the brackets the parentheses with a semicolon this set of code where I actually have it commented remove entry metadata on page not on page post nope nope that's not it right here actually this is the actual code Insert custom HTML div equipped with background image and email sign up. That is actually my ultimate goal. But what we're going to do first, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to actually do that. What I actually need to do and what I like to do, whatever browser you're using, you want to first pull up the developer tools. All right. And from here, what we'll do is we'll click on the arrow right here. And I wanted to put this element in between or right before this set right here and right after the slider. So what you want to do is you want to click on this so you can highlight it blue and make sure you hover over the image or the element so that it is blue so you can see where it's at. We come over here then to the HTML developer tools and we look to see where exactly our element actually is located. So I wanted to insert this right after the section. So if I go up here, if I decollapse that, as you can see, this is where I've actually added the element right down here. Now we're going to use what you want to do is you want to use the insert after command or piece of code in order to make sure that you can insert the class name and this class name I actually have insert after section dot wrapper hyphen slider. And this code is going to insert right after that piece of code. Now if I delete this. Let me go ahead, I'm going to copy. All right. And I'm going to insert, I always like to open up an extra text document to copy some code that I already have. Okay. There goes a set of code that I already got. Let me open that one up. Uh-oh. 
let me just click new document all right I'm going to paste that code here so I can have it just in case there's any mistakes it's just good practice to always take code that you're editing copy it somewhere so therefore if you do mess up you can just repaste that code back where you need to so I'm going to just now delete this here okay and I'm going to actually save it so you can actually see from the jump what this is going to look like okay we'll go back to our website close this and refresh our page and as you can see that red block of code is gone now I'm going to go ahead and go back I'm going to insert uh oh don't want to hit tab go commit command V we're going to put that code back in as you can see I actually have an inline element which is what I do not want so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just delete this style right here because we're going to now go to our CSS okay and here I'm going to just delete this what's on the inside and I'm going to create an ID just for this one particular code and I'm going to name this ID actually I want to use single quotes if I'm using double quotes for the inside code for that jQuery I'm just gonna go ahead and use single quotes when I'm naming my ID and I'm going to name this ID mm, let's see here um, we're going to name it email background all right email background because what I want to do actually is I want to insert an email space just for a product that is going to be sold or be able to be downloaded on this one website all right email background I'm going to actually copy this as you can see I like to copy and paste a lot saves a lot of time go to save changes all right now we're going to go ahead and we're going to now go to appearance go to our customizer I'm going to open link in a new tab so I can keep all the other links open and I can see what I'm working with all right and the name of this theme is actually charitized but this is the basic version because I'm developing and I'm just I'm going to make the edits myself with the current HTML CSS and jQuery JavaScript script skills that I actually have so I'm not going to actually buy the pro unless I just feel like I want to save some time here what we're going to do next is we're going to go to additional CSS okay we'll go back to our developer tools more tools okay now let's see here okay and with this actually can I put this at the bottom right device toolbar nope don't want to do that let's put this up more at the bottom there we go a lot better okay so we're going to put this at the bottom console okay X this out because I don't really need to see that now what I want to do is I'm going to use that new CSS code that I just put the new code or ID number not code but let's just go ahead and let's do it here and by the way this is using this is pretty much old news you don't have to use this additional style sheet anymore okay I'm actually just going to delete this okay I'm going to update file guys just was changing the color all right file edited successfully we're going to just go back now to appearance go back here okay and remember the name of our was email background so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy I must not have did it but anyway we'll just go ahead and we'll create an ID when every time that you're doing an ID you want to go ahead and use a pound sign or hashtag whatever you want to call it is email background uh oh all right so this ID here is going to be email background which is inserted okay just to make sure 
And now what we're going to do is, this is a div that was created. I want to double check that. It is a div. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the width 100% so it can expand and go the entire screen height. Let's just go ahead and test to see if this works. I'm going to make it 500 pixels. All right, look at there. We already have a lot of space, so we know that it is working. Background, let's just go ahead and do blue. Okay, good. All right. And... If I wanted to have something inside of there, I will use image, but I'm just going to add a background image here. So let's see here. I want to make me expand this height some height, maybe 1000 pixels. Okay. It's a pretty nice size, just about background image. Okay. Uh oh. And then we're going to do. All right, if I wanted to do a background image, now it's going to be URL parentheses. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go back to the dashboard over here just to show how to do random images. Post media, we're going to go to our media library. Now I'm just going to pull any image just so I can show you guys how this is going to be done. Let's just use this. Hmm. let's just use this image right here okay what I'm going to do I'm going to copy this URL image highlight all of that copy go back here paste it in here and let's see if that works there we go now we have a problem here because now our background image is on repeat and we do not want that so I'm going to do background image I like to use multiple so I can easily manipulate no repeat okay all right oh do I have to do per no I shouldn't have to do that background image no okay background So we'll do no repeat, background size. Okay, we're going to do 100%. Okay. Hmm, let me actually do cover. background width background background size cover let's do one percent see if that helps to bring the Okay, let's do overflow because now I see that my image is not showing up here. Overflow. Um, nine. Okay, no overflow. Okay, background. Position. Let's do center. I want to center it. Background. Repeat. Okay, I don't know why that happened, but now. All right. So I had to insert a few extra key elements here in order to make this background show up the way that I wanted it to. So now I'm just using this as an example. This isn't going to be the image that I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an email list. Okay, and let me see if that will work. 
if I wanted to add a form here, or for now I'm going to add the placeholder. So I'm going to go back to our jQuery widgets and this is actually going to be on the inside. So I'm going to do div dot class. Okay, and this is just creating a basic another div. Okay, that's going to be a placeholder. And I'm going to put place hyphen holder. All right, let's save that. Uh oh, make mistake. Make sure that it already has only single quotations. So that way you don't mess up the jQuery code. Go to save changes. Okay, now let's go back. Class place holder. All right. All right. Dot place holder. Okay, and you can also do it this way too. So you know that is a child element. Okay, place holder because this place holder class is right after. Or inside of the email background div element so that is going to be considered a child element it is within that div placeholder so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box I'm going to put a border so I can easily see it border 1px for the actual stroke color is going to be black okay and I believe that is all that I need here. 1px black. Oh, solid. That was the other one. Okay, so we're going to have a solid stroke. Now we're going to have the width not be. Just going to do a basic 500px so we can see it. Height is going to be a perfect square 500px. Okay. Maybe I should do red so it's easily seen. Okay. Make sure I got the code right for that placeholder. I do class placeholder. All right. Okay, so now we need to make this. I'm going to put float to the left. Actually, I'm going to change this overflow to hidden. All right. There we go. So if there's anything, so when we're adding float elements, I like to add the overflow feature property uh, with a hidden value to this just in case when I add an element that is floating inside of the parent element, it won't overflow and just disappear on me. So now the next thing that we actually have to do, I want to see where is my element. So uh -oh, that's going out of side of the recording area. Okay. So float. Okay. Actually, let me try to do instead of floating it, let me try to do margin. Okay. Auto. All right. So it should appear. Okay, let's see here. Sometimes may use them with the uh, help. Uh, let me see here because it's still not showing. So let's see what's still going on here. Okay, try to make this thicker because this is not showing. Margin auto width height margin. Let's see here. Okay, let me write something in because we still don't have it seen up here. So let's see what's going on. I'm going to put down cool daddy. Okay, let's see what happens. Make this a P element. Close that. OK, 
Okay, let's go back here. Okay. Hmm. We run into problems like this often. Just add that element because sometimes maybe it's just something simple that's really missing. It's not giving me the results that I want, but our placeholder is not showing up right now. So I'm going to just go ahead and click publish to see if that makes a difference. Okay, let's just go ahead and click publish. All right, let's go back here to our actual instead of media let's go to our website visit site or I'll just click it here because I was just using that as media all right as you can see here's our red box okay I probably will center this as well which I think I've already have but I don't know why I wasn't showing up in customizer but as you can see it did work so the code is actually working accurately margin auto let me actually say margin top and this is another reason you want to have the overflow hidden because if you do not do that and you are shifting space then what's going to happen is that that container is going to move your whole entire parent element down and we do not want that so I'm gonna go margin top let's go ahead and let's make this about 250 px okay hit publish I don't know why it's not showing up here maybe if I exit out it probably will but let's see what it looks like here and Boom, voila. So 250 px did not move my parent element, but as you can see, this is how you simply just do that. All right, well, that is pretty much all I'm going to have here for this tutorial at the moment. And this is basically how you use jQuery using a jQuery UI widget by David Guire in order to be able to manipulate jQuery, manipulate your WordPress thing without having to dig into your PHP files where you want to make it adds some simple elements that you just most certainly cannot add or your thing will not allow you to do so. So anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. And don't forget, after the video, go down to the description. Don't forget to click that show more button and check out my top three resources for hosting, email marketing, and for building a WordPress website from scratch or to customize an existing theme any way that you want to. Once again, thanks for watching. DLJWorks.com.